Now you see me. Now you don't. So I just found out that Lala family has a um, haunted bar in Virginia City, and I told her that I demand that we're going to stay the night there and film it, and it's going to be awesome. And everybody's excited about it except for Lala, but you want to do it, right, Lala? Lala? <laughs> no, I don't want to sleep there. But you're going to do it? No, I'm going to just go. <laughs> so we're going to go, and we're going to go stay the night in this haunted hotel in Virginia City. This has come to, uh, this is Super Bowl Sunday 2015, and we just came up with the best idea ever. Mark Sitko. My name is Bill Doty. I'm a filmmaker, I'm a father, and I'm a professional show off. I love a lot of things. My kids, all things geeky, and my amazing girlfriend, Emily Duncan. I'm Emily Duncan. And I think she likes me too. I love my life. So many things fascinate me in my life. One of those things are ghosts. But the weird thing is, I don't believe in them. But when you're a filmmaker and you're given an opportunity to prove yourself wrong, you take it. And when it becomes a ginormous project, you don't do it alone. You volunteer your automatic filmmaker friends. I'm Sean Small. I'm Angela Dreesio. I, I, wait, I am... I am a student at BSU uh, in the film department. We don't have a film department. I'm just a student. And I'm with Angela. And just like Emily and I, they have a super amazing life. And they're also a bit show off. I was trying I to do ghost space, eh? Like this huge ear kit. He starts to dig it around and make I'm so nervous. So I present to you our ghostumentary. Um, they always look at me like, are you gonna buy those cookies you just squeezed? But I don't ever buy them. There's a creepy guy out there just like sitting in his car. And I hate spiders, and spiders know this. Part of our research was watching every ghost documentary that we could. Uh, I don't have ghosts concern at all. I believe in ghosts. Do I look fat? I believe in ghosts. True believer. I absolutely 100% do not believe in ghosts. So heading into it, we knew we had to do something different, which meant no fake footage. Oh, beautiful. Oh, wait a minute. Go back and do it again. I wasn't recording. We knew that we had to talk to as many professionals as possible. I have to say we're not professionals. I don't okay. think there are any there professionals no in the right. paranormal field. Utilize the latest in ghost hunting technology. We just had a ghost look over here a second ago. And hours and hours of exciting footage. And when all is said and done, hopefully we all learn something. Remember kids, don't drink a ghost hunt. That's this whole lesson, and that's the end of the movie. That's the end of the movie. We just got it. There's our answer. So now it's time to load up the car, hit the road, and make our first attempt at finding a ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What are you guys doing today? Oh, nothing. What are you doing? I don't know. Want to go catch a ghost? Yeah, let's go catch a ghost. Tell me about your superpower again. Um, I can find hair and food super fast, and I can pee at any moment, at any time. Um, He's dog man. I'm dog man. I, I can attract and love any dog, and they will love me back. And you can lick yourself. And I can lick myself. That's she looks best. like she compacts easily. I can grow my hair really long. That's my superpower. What did you get? Chili mango. Ball sag. Yes. <laughs> These th that's it. They completely smell like a ball sack. They smell like a really spicy ball sack. They smell like a hot ball sack. Oh Natural flavors. It's got silicone dioxide to prevent caking. Sean, what are you eating? I think it's a bar of cookie dough. So there's that. Yeah. Few miles away 
We're on the same road. We're on the same road <laughs> that one Zach Bagans has traveled twice that we know of. Um, it's called Murder Avenue. Murder? Yeah, didn't they get murdered? Everyone in the town? Did the whole town get, I don't know. Do you Maybe. know more history about this town than I do? Nope, I just have a feeling. Oh, <laughs> you just get <laughs> Every uh, single person. They're all dead. Murdered. What if we showed up now and they were all dead? Do we feel like Every shot like Jessica Lang in American Horror Story. We got to Virginia City. Number one, the girls were hungry. Is this scary? At least you're not eating ball sack anymore. Not yet. This is the funny video that gets made before you go into the haunted location where everybody gets murdered in their sleep. Enjoy it. Number two, we had to meet Dawn. My first impression of Dawn was that she was loud. She definitely was a character. But she was goofy and nice. But I knew it was going to be interesting. And we just wanted to show up in Virginia City and find a damn ghost as soon as we got there. Bill and I were out here looking at the brewery and uh, the lights were on upstairs. We were just kind of looking at it and as we turned to walk away, that door right there just slammed closed. Oh, the scary looking one. Yeah, the scary looking one. So that was fun. Angela and I split up uh, from the rest of the group and we went down to the world famous Washoe Club. Uh, we were lucky enough to meet up with Tom and Debbie with Bats in the Belfry and they gave us a lot of information about the Union Brewery that we weren't able to find anywhere else. To my understanding, it, it's been a saloon or a bar for a very, very, very long, long time. Yeah. Um, they, down, in the downstairs area in the basement, um, that was also Another bar down there, that's where Tom saw a full-bodied apparition. Yeah, and I saw the apparition peak um, from behind the uh, wall, stick its head and uh, upper body. So we headed back to the Union Brewery. Um, everybody else went down into the basement. I did not. I don't want that best. Take a picture up there. Then we went to investigate the upstairs apartment. What do we have here? This one's gonna be really cute. I like this wall. I love the brick. I know, is this HGTV or is this a. I know. It's really cute. I really love this wall over here. I'll take it. I feel like the building is leaning to the side. I feel like I'm gonna fall over. Well, it's what? 8,000 years old? Yeah. Well, I like that fan too. And then we went to the main floor to play with the spirit box. The battery on this, so I know you're trying to come through. Now we've never really worked with a spirit box before. There was a lot of interference with the light and where she would put the spirit box, the noises that were coming no. out of it. Can you put that back down a minute, just so I can look. put it back down for a minute, That's so I can look. Into no, please put it back down. See? We just had voices. Please put it back down. Honey, you're getting please put it back down. Oh, I will say we were all very excited about this. I will also say, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. It was really interesting. I sat down next to her for a while. Did you hear it? I heard it. I heard it. Don kept asking questions, um, a lot of questions over and over again. There were a couple responses that we got. How many more people? We've already heard you three times. What? What's that? Right, right. You, did you just say right? The spirit box was really active. I thought the spirit box was interesting. I didn't know how it worked, but we seemed to be getting responses out of it. Um, so I listened, and then I realized that people are gonna hear what they wanna hear. An example being right here. Did he say kill you? No. He said sure. No, I, I heard kill you. I heard kill you. I heard kill you. Oh, I heard Sorry, sure. can you say it again? I heard kill you. I heard jeweler. Wait, they just said something. Jeweler. 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 
We were excited and we were engaged with it. We were asking questions, we were getting responses. Pretty much. Are you annoyed with Nick? It's just a, it's music from the channels. It sends something. There was a study recently that if you play either, either EVP or statements from the ovalis or from the spirit boxes to people randomly, just grab a bunch of people who don't know anything about this stuff and ask them what it says, they'll come up with different things. And then if you tell them what it says, they will all hear the same thing. The moment you tell somebody what that pattern says, if the pattern was not extremely clear to begin with, they will hear something else. They will hear what you tell them to. So there's that issue as well. Um, and all of those things are a problem with this. Uh, not to mention that you never know if these things are gimmicked in some way, too. So Bill and I slept in the brewery. Originally, Sean was going to sleep in the brewery with Emily and I, but somebody wimped out. I was not going to stay the night in the Union Brewery, and I was also not going to stay the night at the Silver Queen Hotel by myself. Uh, I was told I was staying in the hotel room with Angela. Although we didn't hear anything as we were sleeping, the digital recorders picked up some things that we actually couldn't explain. Uh, if you listen close enough, you'll hear, are they still sleeping? And another one that we like to refer to as storm. Because you can hear a piano, thumps and drags. I didn't hear it until we heard it on the EVP. It's an old building though, it could have been anything, so. Slept through the night, uh, I didn't hear anything except for that little clangy thing that was going. And what did you hear? I won't film you because you haven't got ready yet. Um, I had my earplugs in and it sounded like somebody was whispering in my ear without earplugs. So I ended up taking my earplugs out so I could actually like hear things. <laughs> and so for the scariest thing that I've witnessed all night long, is um, the coffee place um, doesn't open until 9 a.m. After breakfast, we took Bill and Emily uh, up to show them our room. They were gonna be checking into the hotel that day as well. Um, and while we were doing that, something pretty interesting happened. Oh. I noises in here today. Well, yeah, what is that sound up there? Uh, like, that woman's cave that's making all that sound. It's they broke water main. That's why there was no water? Yes, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> that would be water. The water would main broke. Oh. The main is very important. Why's our room open? My door's open. What? Did you lock it? Yeah. yeah. Look at it. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. That is, that is awesome. Wait, since we're here, I'm gonna put better eyeliner on. Yeah. All right, so what happened? Stuff, it locks automatically. And, and I, funny, like, when we stuff yeah. went to go upstairs, I closed it tight and pushed and pulled and double checked. Cause I'm like, I'm leaving the camera here, blah, blah, blah. Doors latched, yep, we're good. Angela, you got the key. She said yes. You closed the door. I did. So what just happened? So we left to go look at your room. I just want to get your hair while you're doing this. You Made sure off? that yeah. we had the key. Sean closed the door, <coughs> locks automatically, came back downstairs and our room was open. <coughs> ah, sorry. I got a thing. There's some water in there. And then what happened last night? So last night I was standing right here, doors locked, it automatically locks. You close it, it locks on its own. Standing here reading, all of a sudden the door just goes like that. And I promptly went and sat in that chair over there and cried. Thanks, Ghost Bomber. So, how easy is this not to close? See this? So, this yeah. turns. If it manages to stick, then it doesn't. But see the watch. Oh, it's 
Sorry. The size of our room and the oh yeah. Sorry. Oh. Am I too fat to just wear this t-shirt? No. no. Define okay. fat. We left one camera. Uh, focused on the door of our room to see if we could capture anything and we headed back across the street to the Union Brewery to get our first interview with Nick, the other owner of the brewery. My son Austin's now here. And Say hi Austin. How's it going? Austin's going to joining the crew, came in from uh, college for the weekend to film. I didn't actually uh, believe in ghosts before I bought it. I was a non-believer. We have a very unusual uh, of, uh, collection of, of stuff, uh, like balls of light, shadow men, and noises, voices, etc. It never felt like I was alone. I got thrown down the stairs off my ladder. I was in the basement moving boxes down to the back room where the old brewery used to be. I saw a shadow. We already had a psychic in that said that there was a woman living in the attic and three children that have the run of the building. Are you trying to get the ghosts to be more friendly with you now? Yeah, I even bought up a bottle of um, bourbon with a couple of glasses and they didn't drink it, so I had to. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't waste it, but, but it still scares me to go down the basement. And on that cue, to the basement. Okay, we're recording and heading down. Let's see how well the night vision works. Okay, not very well, I can't see anything. Yeah. Oh, the night vision wasn't on. There we go. Night vision's on now. Uh, we are in the basement. Daytime session. Uh, we just did a really quick EVP. Electronic voice phenomenon, EVP. Electronic voice phenomenon was first popularized during the spiritualist movement at the turn of the century when audio recording technology first appeared. EVPs are basically voices of the dead captured on tape. According to some experts, spirits use the energy of the recording device to communicate through white noise. EVPs are classified into three groups depending on their intensity. They are not generally heard at the time of the recording but can be identified during playback. Usually, an EVP is just one word or short sentence or phrase and sometimes it's just a groan, grunt or growl. There is no scientific evidence to prove an EVP is actually a communication from the deceased. We tried to do an EVP session, but this was about one o'clock in the afternoon, and Virginia City is a party town. There was just no way that it wasn't going to be completely contaminated, so um, we called that off. Where do you think we should put these awesome animals? Angela brought some target props for the little girl downstairs a puffin and a teddy bear, and we set those up on the stairs to see what would happen. Dawn had mentioned to Lala a few times before our trip that there was a little girl that resides there, a little girl spirit. She actually sent a picture of what, to me, does look like a little girl standing on the stairs that go down into the basement. Uh, it does look like a little girl. She looks like she's balding, but it is a good picture. Well, we're placing the trigger objects. We've got a puffin and a teddy bear. If you move them, then we'll know that you're here. And as Bill was filming the trigger objects, these tiny little white no, sparkles started to appear on the stairs around the stuffed animals. He saw them first and then showed me on this his camera. Right. And right it was pretty amazing at first. It See seemed it? to be responding to the bill. Who's here? Can you tell me your name? See that. Oh, see that? Yep. No, something just keeps flying in front of it. You see it? See that. Austin, do you see it? See it once. See that sparkle that keeps happening? Can you walk by or sit by or be by the animals again? Oh see yeah. See it? That? Yeah, I saw that it. same spot every time. That's cool. Yeah. Right when I ask it to do it. After that, we went upstairs and began immediately reviewing the footage. Bill, of course, being the skeptic, trying to debunk it. Me, of course, being so the true believer, going, light. but flash, wait, it flash. answered your question. It responded. There, and that's, it does it, uh, right when I say that, so. Mm -hmm. I feel like they were moving slower than they would be moving if they were kicked up with wind. It was happening when I asked it to happen, and there was that flash in that spot, that glitter, a little sparkle. Mm -hmm. 
But then again, it's a camera. It's a digital camera. The glitter could be the orbs moving. Is the orbs was glitch. not a glitch. It's if a it's camera. repeatable, uh, dust doesn't follow a track. Again, I'm not going to say it's a ghost. It yeah. could be dust. It could be magical dust. It could be magical, intelligent, repeating dust. It could, it could be fairy dust. And now it's we're going to call this fairy mentory. So it's, it'll be interesting to do that again tonight. Do you want to know the history of orbs? Dave who made for a very long time a big deal about his statements on ABC News that ghosts are everywhere. He was getting orbs at haunted places, and his logic was ghosts are everywhere, orbs are everywhere, therefore spirits are, orbs are spirits. That is incredibly illogical because, you know what, chairs were there too, so if there's a ghost in the house there must be, and there's a chair in the house, there must, then the chair must be the ghost. All right, so now also during the 1990s something else happened. There were, um, was a shift towards digital photography, and there was a, an increase in the power of flashes. So reflective surfaces, uh, and when you have the short focal length, we're getting reflect, semi-reflective surfaces would cause flashbacks. So just because you're getting orbs doesn't mean you're getting ghosts. You have to have some independent verification. If that's the only thing you've got, you've got nothing. Uh, earlier that day, Lala, Dawn, Nick and I took a little bus tour of Virginia City. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting was the cemetery. Man. Okay, here we are at the cemetery. Uh, here we are at the cemetery. She took the tour today. The most famous prostitute, she was murdered for her jewelry and furs. And they buried her at the base of the mountain. All the men wanted her buried in the cemetery with all of their family type of um, religion. And all the women said no. Doesn't it seem like the beginning of a horror movie, like a new one now? Hey guys, let's go in the cemetery. It's just not getting dark. So they said the prostitute had like a thousand people at the funeral because she was very much loved. As we were walking in and she was telling us some story, we heard nothing. Not a sound coming from anywhere. Our footage has the recording of what we can only describe as a cattle drive. We knew that there was another group of, of people, uh, like three people, quietly walking down the hill from us. It was nothing but quiet. It was beautiful. We got amazing footage. Hold on. Hey, honey, we're shooting. We're up on top of the Bodo parking garage. This is why you turn your phone off when uh, you're filming. Yeah. If any of us would have heard that, which appeared to be some sort of cattle drive going right by us, we would have said to the camera, hey, there's a, there's a, a cattle drive going right by here. You can actually hear yee-haw, you hear horses running, you hear men shouting. It could have been anything, but the fact that the five of us did not hear it and how clear it was on the camera, it seems a lot. Is that the cult down there with We're the pink house? house. That was the, what did they say that was? It was the John Cougar Mellencamp. It, it does sound like a cattle drive. It also sounds like crows. Uh, we were also in a giant valley that is full of people who might be herding cattle. <laughs> we miss so much uh, by not allowing the quiet and the stillness of the now to fully envelop us. And by doing that, you become this incredible listening device, this device that can see and, and can experience beyond anything that I could describe. All right, so we're scanning on a different frequency here. I don't know if you know what that means, but it might help us hear you better. Can you say hello? Okay, well... All right, all right, ghost, we're gonna go because you're not here. What's over there? So, I really wish you would have talked to us. So we went back to the Union Brewery and I wanted to play with the spirit box a little bit more. So I was just messing around with it, asking questions, seeing if I could get any answers out of it. PSV7, ITC research device. You guys want to turn downstairs? Or you want to just rest and try to get later? Sure. Is there anybody in here right now, please tell me yes on this spirit box. There's a Viking in here. 
Is there anybody else here that wants to say hi? Sounds like that. I'm just going station by station now. How can you think about nothing? I do it all the time. Huh? We're haunted. Oh, We're haunted by a married couple that has a laugh track. <laughs> Will you tell me the truth? Well, I, th I mean, that's not the way that it's used. People don't use it by going one station at a time. I mean, that's not how it's. You I, say it, I have seen it used where there is no chance of a radio signal being picked up at all. Okay, I'll admit I could be wrong. But I don't believe the stuff that we're hearing in here is a spirit. I think it's a radio. And if you randomly get a DJ saying a certain word, you're going to hear that. Or a commercial or whatever. It's you're going to hear what you want to hear. I'd have to say my least favorite, unfortunately, and it's very popular out there, is probably going to be the ghost boxes. I've taught classes where I've actually recorded like a two-hour cycle and I presented it to my students and I said we're going to try this experiment and I'm going to turn this ghost box on and I want you guys to you know ask questions and see if you get any answers. And sure enough with something that was pre-recorded they didn't know it was pre-recorded they were still able to pull out answers out of questions that they were asking live at that moment. Unfortunately, in this field, it's so easy to point at shadows and flickers of lights and strange noises and say, oh, that's a ghost. PSB7 Spirit Box. The Spirit Box captures spirit voices in real time. Using a millisecond adjustable forward and reverse frequency sweep and using high frequency white noise, the box scans AM and FM frequency ranges from 76 megahertz to 87.9 megahertz. The first spirit box is said to date back to Thomas Edison, who is rumored to have been working on a variation of the box while inventing the phonograph. Frank Sumption, inventor of the modern day spirit box, claims spirits helped him invent the device and white noise creates raw audio that spirits can use to communicate with the user. The SB7 is a spin-off of Sumption's invention and was originally created to communicate with extraterrestrials. There is no scientific proof that the spirit box does what is claimed. When we were finished with that, um, Angela and I had the opportunity to go back to the Washoe and have a private tour of the second floor. Here we are in the stairway, heading up stairs of the world famous Washoe Club. I was scared, but I was excited. I was scared excited. I was excited scared. I didn't know what I was. Thomas was gracious enough to take us upstairs, and as we moved through the location, there was a physical change in our bodies. You feel it up there. You just feel it. He took us through all the hot spots and the areas where things have been captured on film, where things have been reported. Thomas took us into a room that we stood at the entrance, he says. Okay. No, thanks. When we got inside, Tom said, you know, tell me if there's an area in this room that feels different. And I always leave it up to the individual. I walked up, I put my hand on the spot, and I said... Right here? Yes, you're exactly right. He then told us the history of the room. This spot, there was a woman that was uh, in this spot. She was so terrified. She was not killed. It's... But she was so terrified and uh, that it imprinted in that corner. It wasn't until later reviewing the footage, as I'm standing there with my hand on the wall, we have the again, glowing one white light time. anomaly come out of my hand and float up my arm. I can't explain the feeling, and I can't give you the feeling on film of what was happening in that room. I will say it was intense. It was one of the most intense paranormal experiences I've ever had. It was emotional, and it was scary, no, and nothing. it was exciting, so and it was so draining. What you did, however, what the guide had you do to go to that spot, that actually, going back to Gertrude Schmeidler, she pioneered an experiment you can conduct in the, in the field, which is you take a bunch of people who don't know anything about the ghost story into a house, give them a floor plan, and say, see if anything feels weird in this house. And you do it two houses, one haunted and one not, and see if they mark the spots that actually match what the witnesses say. 
and you get these great react responses that people always pick this stuff up. So back to your question about how we prove it to a skeptic, explain that. You guys watch Ghost Adventures? That floor of the Washoe Club was what really started it all for Ghost Adventures and uh, every TV series, every ghost television show has been there at one point or another. So we, were in, we felt incredibly lucky to be there. Remember the first uh, two or three seasons? Mm -hmm. They had a, they showed a noose. Yeah. There it is. What? Yeah. That's the and noose. That, that's the noose. It's an uh, <laughs> old phone cord. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if maybe Zach and him did it back in 2004. Okay, tell me, uh, so what's going on right now? Uh, we went to the Washoe Club. I just got really, really cold, and my head just started killing me. And I'm not a headache girl. As a believer, I do think that spirits and entities can draw your energy out of your body. I don't know. What I do know is that when I came back downstairs and asked the bartender for some aspirin, two other people in the bar with her both all turned around and said, that is not uncommon up there. So I don't know if there's like asbestos or something that causes people to have headaches or if the ghosts are just grabbing the back of my neck really hard. That could be it. I don't know. Or aliens. It could be aliens. That's, that's a possibility. While Sean and Angela were at the Washoe Club, we stayed at the brewery to investigate the basement with a San Francisco-based paranormal group. We asked you just quietly come along and watch. Well, I think I would honestly say, after this weekend, I think you probably will be convinced. That was Don on the stairs. Did you, you feel something, Don? Don? Yes. What? Sorry. Are uh, you by cold. Don right Sorry. now? Cold chill right through my body. I got a little bit of that, too. So the ovulus starts spewing out random words. <gasps> Sultry. Are you a woman? No, it's a man. And apparently there was a ghost behind her. And if you want to show us digging, it said. It's right behind us. Right behind us. Are you behind her? I'm stuck here with you. It said cleansing. I don't want to cleanse. I don't want to cleanse you unless you want me to. Are you... Hey, Jim, can you come and sit next to me right now? Jim, would you like to cuddle, Don? I wouldn't mind a cuddle. I hope you didn't say you're horny. Okay, oh, Jim. Well, what you asked for. Jim. <gasps> it's the ghost of Stephen Hawking. We're now in phonetic mode. I'm not that unattractive. Come sit with me. Who's down here? Bill, are you down here? I'm down here. Are you believing yet or not? Uh, I'm just, all I'm doing is trying to capture everything I can. That's my best bet. That's, an hour, yes. that's a, that's a, I haven't figured it out yet. When you start hearing words like, We're trying to contact. We know you can use this. I'm over here, don't mind all that screaming. No. Okay, so I'm here, cuddle me. Automatic. Well, that's a very unusual name. More talking. Fiddle. Did you play the fiddle? Are you a crazy fiddle player? Or part of a band in a banjo? You realize this is about as random as it's going to get. And we call it a night. Ovalist ghost box. Oh, we'll talk again. May as well get this one as perfect as we can. Ovalus Ghost Box. Created by retired electronics engineer Bill Chappelle, the Ovalus Ghost Box converts environmental readings, electromagnetic frequencies, temperatures, etc., into real words and phonetic responses. The device contains a database of over 500 stored words, sounds, and syllables. Users combine environmental readings with the word database to receive audible responses which generally come one word at a time. There is no scientific proof to the validity of the obelisk. Don comes walking upstairs with her spirit box. 
and start screaming at it. Do we have anybody here tonight? Yes. Can you hear it? Did that say ugly? I hope it didn't call me ugly. It's going to piss me off. You're saying yes three times? Oh, did you? Can I say what you were trying to figure out? What is that? I can listen. story goes like this. We get settled in for our delicious pizza and... Which was very delicious. It was so good. good. It was good pizza. I was, I was happy with it. Dawn begins herself. First she asked, so do you believe yet? You need to go down to the basement by yourself for what was it? An, an hour, hour and, and, a, and half. a half. No, I'm not going to smell your feet. Oh, I can smell them. Oh. You're, you're a weenie, circle. you're a scaredy cat, uh, no balls. So the only reason I was able to go is because you actually stood up and started pointing at her and talking to her too. Mm -hmm. And I was like, excuse me, pew, and yes. I was gone. Do you just have, I put socks on because my feet's hurt. Yes, they do. Our plan for the evening, which was going to be an extensive investigation of the Union Brewery, is now out the window. But this does not discount this trip. Um, I did have experiences at the Union Brewery in the basement and Stinky with the donkey. Um, back up the back that the Union Brewery is haunted. Um, I had fat sticking Bill, out. you know what? I have to edit that out of it. My fat stomach sticking out. Um, but you know what you should do? Is you should go back to the brewery and spend a half an hour in the basement by yourself. I First of all, Don would be there. And I would kill myself and then I'd haunt the place. So it's a win-win. We've got, will you come back and say, I'm Bill, I'm a ghost. Get on the speaker box, mm -hmm. it, and I'll have a station that'll play all the top ten ghost hits. Is this Lady Gaga? I heard your name said on here. Actually, I want to get, uh, we're going to do a quick shot of Austin sitting in the barber chair, because his chair, his jacket matches. He'll be camoed into the chair. So, okay. Here we go. Is it turn? Okay, that's it. Done. Cool. After Virginia City, I realized that if you want to see a ghost, you're going to see a ghost. A couple things happened to me personally in Virginia City that made me believe a little bit more. But a lot of things also made me a little bit more skeptical than I was going into this. I actually left Virginia City believing in ghosts less than I did before. On leaving Virginia City, we realized a few things. Um, First of all, we realized we didn't really know what we were doing. We were barely scratching the surface of what we wanted to do with this film. But we were interested in learning more and figuring out how to do this the correct way. We wanted more. I think we just need more experience. I mean, are we really investigating correctly? We weren't sure we even knew what a ghost was. Okay, what's a ghost? Um, a ghost is a, your soul, um, your soul once you die. I, I don't know what a ghost is. I mean, once you're dead, you turn into someone else. So assuming that you do believe in ghosts, yeah. what exactly is a ghost? I think a ghost is someone who doesn't realize you're dead. I don't, I don't know, it's like a, something that's in the room, but you can't really see it. Probably a spirit that is stuck here after the person's body is dead. Most of my knowledge comes from cartoons like Scooby-Doo, so... <laughs> you know that's always usually just a guy, though, in a mask? Yeah. The whole time? Unmasked, yeah. It's like a really angry guy? Yeah. 
So, and if which, it wasn't those for those kids, we would have got away with it. So, pounds. We'll both stand close to him that way. Ten pounds, I hear. How many? Yeah. That looks like Sean ate four cameras. Well, the word ghost actually is not when we typically use in parapsychology, but because in many cultures it has different flavors, different meanings. But most people in the United States would take the word ghost to mean someone who has died and has come back or stuck around after their death. We would use the word apparition for that. It's an older term, but it actually is a little bit cleaner than ghost because it doesn't have the same cultural or cross-cultural connotations to it. The apparition, or ghost in that case, would be someone's consciousness, personality, spirit, mind, soul, whatever you want to call it, that survives the death of the body and is still here, typically has not moved on to wherever it is they go, but is still here and is capable of interaction. And it's the interaction that's the most important piece for us. Because the other side of the coin is what people still use the word ghost for, which is some sort of repeating pattern, what a lot of ghost hunters call residual energy or, or psychic imprint. We like to call it place memory. It's a haunting. Places are haunted, objects are haunted. They seem to have memory of people and events that were kind of recorded by living people, not by dead people, that can be seen as ghosts, can be seen as holograms or however you want to see it. And those are not interactive. So on the one hand, we have consciousness, which is interactive after death, and on the other, we have pictures, imprints of us who are potentially still alive, in fact. So we did a online survey. 70% of the people said that they do believe in ghosts. But only 30% say they've actually seen a ghost. What makes you believe in ghosts, although you have zero personal evidence? Maybe people want to believe. I think they believe in them because they've heard other people's stories. Part of me, when somebody tells me a ghost story, deep in my head, I'm thinking, all right, okay, you think you saw something. But then I don't think anybody's lying when they see it because the reality is people I love and respect have ghost stories. Several of us had unexplained um, things happen to us. And the one that I can tell you about happened directly to me. <laughs> and I have a ghost story to go with that story. When I was um, a teenager living with my parents. So my ghost story takes us back to fifth grade. I was uh, there with my then best friend. Uh, we were staying alone in the house. This is a, a big uh, four-story house that houses about 80 guys. We had this old piano in our basement and it had come across the United States on a covered wagon. His parents were out for the evening and was, so we, we grabbed his dad's Ouija board. So we're gonna go relieve ourselves in the sump pump. And I said, as we were doing this, wouldn't it be weird if the door shut and the lights turned off? Black, um, ivory, keys, I mean it was really worn and old and I would learn how to play the piano on it. And then uh, the thing literally did start moving. Right after I said that and right after he said that, the door slammed shut and the light blew out. I hear a woman singing, thinking that's my mom, and I just kind of snicker and laugh as I'm playing along. And my mom and my sister look at each other and they say, no, we, we were not singing. All the cabinet doors started just banging, uh, the window opened and shut. So we ran out of there like uh, Shaggy and Scooby. And that's when I ran the rest of the way up the stairs and I did not go into the basement for a good month. We, we ran and hid in their parents' other car until they got home. Like, do you, what do you want as an intro? Where I live, what I do, do you need any of that stuff? I would like your social security number and your mother's uh, maiden name. Well, that seems reasonable. Let me check my bank card. I have it all written on the back. And Give it us is some history. Super haunted. Um, well, actually, I do know a bit of history. I, uh, what's, what are you, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to chase you with that. <laughs> Look, art. So, why are we here today? Well, because you wanted me to tell, you wanted people to tell ghost stories, and I have a ghost story about this building. I know a lot of people do, but I have one. So now I go, hey, come with me. And then walk off camera. What is this, MTV Cribs? Yeah. <laughs> come check it out. I walked off camera, and then you followed me. <laughs> Does it work if you, if you keep. Because right, I'll try it again. Okay, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. I'm not going to say ghost, but it's ghosts. We're going now. 
It's not porn. Uh, so I got up to the top floor and uh, have a little, you know, heat bag thing with my pizza delivery, and I got out and came out here. I finished up with the with the delivery, and I got back into the elevator to go back down, and I pushed floor one. And the elevator doors close. The elevator starts to go down. I feel that little lurch in your stomach, right? And it just goes, you know, floor, bing, five, bing, four, bing, three, waiting to get off of the elevator. And the elevator doors open. The elevator doors open. And I step out. And, uh, and I'm still on the sixth floor. I haven't moved. I mean, I found the staircase and I took those stairs down like five, six at a time. And I got back to the pizza place and I told my manager, like, never again. That was the scariest thing I've ever done. Like that, I'm, I'm done, that's it. Hence ends your career in pizza. It, it did. Nice. Also the place closed down because it wasn't very good, but mostly ghosts. I'm, I'm sort of a skeptic myself. Um, I don't know necessarily that I believe, I just know what happened, and that certainly did happen. So we're on the sixth floor? Yep, top floor of the building that you can get besides the roof. Okay, floor one. And it just, literally every single floor. Well, apparently we skipped four. We skipped four. And number two. Okay, I felt it. There's Whoa. no ghosts hate even If we numbers. woke up and if we see Brian. Oh. Are you real? Is this the first floor? I'm super we're glad we're on the first floor right now. Because, like, literally, if that happened again, I'd probably have a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> I just ran into Aaron from Ghost Adventures. Hello? Um, what's the scariest thing you've ever encountered? Uh, scariest thing I've ever encountered would be my house. I tend to bring things home. I don't say stay there. I kind of go, if you want to come home with me, come home with me. I'm part of a social experiment already. Oh, my house. Stuff I bring home. Oh, I'm talking spirits. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, took my finger and I scraped across the grave in the witch from Jamaica. And I broke a piece of her grave and I said, since we did this, you're gonna, you got a piece of me, I got a piece of you. And pretty much after that, she followed me home and still went there. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you stuck with your body? I don't think you're stuck with your body. I think that's the peak of your ego collapse where you have to leave your body behind. You've spent your entire life being attached to your body. And when you die, you have to give it up. You died and somebody goes, there was like a ghost travel agent and they said, we'll take you anywhere you want to go and that's where you're going to go and you can do anything forever. What would you do? Oh, I'd haunt my life for the rest of my life. <laughs> sure. So he's gonna go before you. <laughs> I feel I feel sorry for the next guy. I would go to Hawaii and hang out on the beach and eat a lot of donuts. What are my powers? Ghost powers, standard ghost powers. Where'd First go? I'd go to In N Out and then get some fries. Floating, going, scaring people. Ghosts are more of locked to where either they died or they had like an unfinished business. So it's more like... So it'd be better to die at like Disneyland yeah, than, yeah, than like in an insurance seminar. I don't know, I'd probably go haunt people on the bridge. You know, just like they're sitting on the bridge and be like, whoop. And they're like, oh no, did somebody push me? <laughs> Is there fun? <laughs> so, ah, that's not what they'd be yeah. thinking. Yeah. Ah, but did somebody push me? So you'd murder people. There's a, a, a rare, rare cases where you might find a ghost uh, actually attached to a location. They become so connected to that location for various reasons. Uh, oftentimes it can be a location of tragedy, for example. Uh, extreme violence uh, took place in their uh, transition when they died. And uh, oftentimes they can be so connected to a location because of their addiction, if I could use that, uh, to their previous life. We went to the Cottonwood Cemetery, which was started in 1906. It's in Fort Boise. There have been reports of horse hooves and babies crying. We brought our really good friend and filmmaker, Ron Torres, to come with us. I will say that is, from a distance is a weird noise. For no other reason than he had nothing better to do. Okay, this is uh, session one, Cottonwood Cemetery. Friday night. 
Where did, did we lose Emily? I actually do have a story. Um, when I was, I guess, probably 19 or 20, and I was up there with a buddy of mine. Huh. Late at night, just sitting on top of the, the picnic table cover, and we heard to this day probably the scariest, most blood curdling scream I've ever heard in my life. It was to where we literally jumped to the ground, ran to the car, raced down the mountain, went to the old 7 Eleven down on the corner of Broadway, and called the police. It wasn't like I'm in danger. I'm an endangered scream. It was more like a guttural presence, or maybe? Yeah, it was like. It was... I'll swallow your soul, I'll swallow your soul? Pretty much. We've come out tonight to talk to you, let you know that we're here. There's this little red light at the end of these. If you come and talk into them, we'll be able to hear you. I keep hearing something over that way and it's not Bill and Emily. Angela and I had heard a sound off in the distance and seen a light coming from the same area. So we walked over to the corner of the cemetery closest to it to investigate. I see it right now. Yeah. Outside of the fence. Again, it's like not something you can like, I mean, look, it feels like it's like in the fence. See the fourth row of tombstones? Follow it down and just go up. And then like, there's a EVP, we kind of did it here. Ghosts. And this really kind of happened when we reviewed the footage. We didn't get anything, but this looks great. So we started thinking about other ghost shows. And the thing that really bugged me is the presentation. You know, how easy is it with a little bit of music and um, night vision to kind of make this stuff up or make people more anxious? Reality ghost shows are super cheesy and definitely scripted. You know, I've turned down shows myself um, because the producers, directors, they want me to look the other way if they decide to alter a story or alter the evidence. And all of a sudden I got pushed into the small of my back down. And now it was only three stairs. Mm -hmm. On Ghost Adventures they made it sound like I fell all the way down. One of my colleagues, uh, Barry Taff, was asked originally, he was approached for the show before Jason and Grant were, and the producers, Barry tells that the producers actually asked him how he felt, how comfortable he feels about faking things. Flat out. And that's why he didn't do the show. I just realized I'm Scooby-Doo in this scenario. Can you do an impression of a ghost? Uh, no. I think you can. I think you're hesitant. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the answer I'm looking for is boo. Ooh. And then maybe some arm flailing, like, yeah, like that. When a maybe. ghost has got the hand maybe. thing. Do they make yeah. sounds? I don't think so. Uh, chains. Chains. I would, that was an acceptable answer if they had chains on. I, it's, you know, like dangling stuff or moving. I don't know. You don't want to do impression, do you? No, I don't. An impression of a ghost. Well, usually they're they're trapped in their daily activities. A lot of people don't understand what a ghost is, or a lot of people don't believe in it. And when they do experience it, it freaks them out to the point where most people can't recover from. I am a I am a cultic master. Well, if 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 I could talk to somebody who was dead and I needed to give them some information to help them exist better, I would tell them realize that you have no limitations when you're on your tent. Whatever it is that they did in their regular life, they usually just, they still do it and they just don't do it. You can penetrate thought, you can penetrate mystery, you can penetrate mass and energy, you can penetrate time and location. I'm not afraid to die, I'm actually looking forward to it. When I would understand if someone was murdered, they're forced to live that over and over again. Even if, even if you die in your sleep, anytime your soul leaves your shell. Anytime a soul will leave its shell, it's, it's always painful. But like a regular person who dies from regular, like old age or something, they just, just walking around their house, they don't really realize what they're, you know, what's going on. They haven't been told or they don't realize that they're dead. So they just, 
go about their daily lives. And when they finally do realize that they're dead, they usually leave as soon as they realize it. They go, what's that light in the corner that I've been looking at this whole time and they just end up walking through well, it? Well, from what I understand, it's not really a light. It's more like a tunnel. Maybe we need to go where people have peacefully died in their sleep. Growing up here, uh, we had heard stories for years about the old tuberculosis hospital over in Gooding. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Tuber tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. They've heard footsteps upstairs in the attic, a little girl singing. Some of the people there said that they've been able to look upstairs when they're outside and see someone looking at them through the windows. Tuberculosis. Tuber Say it one more time, hold on. Tuber. Tuber. Q. Q. Losis. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. In the early 1920s, the tuberculo... <laughs> okay, we got it. The secret to ghost hunting is Mexican candy. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Hi, friend. What do you want to tell us about the candy you bought? Oh, you mean this? Yeah. It's just powder. Yeah, yeah, it's like cocaine for children. Wait, go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> it tried to get sweet, but then it just tasted like nasty shoes. It's like sweet, hot leather. Okay, here's Good. your rusty suckers. <laughs> no! I think it has shoe sprinkled. Does oh. it have watermelon in it? It has shoe sprinkles. It's it pretty dirt. far from watermelon. That too. Oh, there are watermelon. Yes. Right underneath the ash. You must love ass. Well, once you start, you can't <laughs> stop. Yeah. Try calcium phosphate was added to make it free flowing. <laughs> That's not. Oh my god. <laughs> she just has a seizure. <laughs> it tastes kind of like those essential oil bath salts that like, you put in your bath, not the like mm. bath salts that make you eat people's faces. But I don't think it's that bad, really. It tastes kind of like soap. I don't <laughs> <laughs> But I kind of like it. it. Still not sure why there's a peanut with eat a sombrero. It. I don't want to eat it. Oh god. I want to go rub my tongue off. Yeah. yeah we're getting radio stations, aren't we? So I want to take the antenna off completely. It doesn't so screw it's up. Kind of an option. All right. You can make a good, tiny unicorn horn for your cat. I already have an inflatable one. Oh. All right. Should we just shut that off for now and then? All right. So so much for the spirit box. Okay, we're recording. This is session one. Uh, the attic of the University Inn. Up here there's kids. Is there anybody here with us tonight? Can you give us a sign? Can you let us know? Is there anybody who'd like to say hello or would like to communicate with us? The hospital in 1947. And it was right. a university before that for quite a while. So it's close. To, it's got to be pushing 100 years old, if not 100. Can you do something to let us know you're here, like make a sound or, or move something? Anything that you can do to show us you're here. Do you want us to go? <laughs> this is so creepy. What is that? We'd sing with you if you want. I'm oh, sorry, Flash. Do you have a favorite song? <laughs> Get it away! <laughs> this week on Ghost Adventures. <laughs> what, what, did it feel like a spider? Or like... You know what it felt like? Like a piece of wood fell from, a little light piece of wood fell and touched the top of my light of it, on the top of my head. Why does it have to be a piece of wood? Maybe it was a ghost. Because I'm a woodist. I'm a materialist. I'm a, I'm a racist towards other materials. Okay, see? Did it have to be 
<sighs> Look, I can see. Check Bill for spiders. Check me for spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a spider on me? No, there's no for spider. Anything on me? This is the first place yeah, that's of, of everywhere we've been that I feel uneasy. And I don't know if it's because I felt something tapping me. That'll do it. When we first got up here, I didn't feel anything. And now I'm just like, like I did. When we first came I up here feel... with the lady that owns the place, I felt like something was watching us from over here. Something just got me in the back of the head. What did it feel like? It felt like somebody tickling me in the back of the head. <laughs> Are you playing with the boys? Do you want us to go or do you want us to stay? Can you touch me? Almost poop my pants right. <laughs> Can you do that again? Rush of chills over me and then something touched my shoulder. Mm hmm That's exactly what happened to me. Yeah, you got the chills too. Did anybody notice that it just got a little cooler in here? It did over here. I've got a pretty steady state of chills going down there. I thought it's... Somebody doesn't know how to spell red room. Is not a demon coming from the depths of hell. That is arthritis. Flash. Let's take this ball upstairs. Can I go for it. You want some? but what do we ask? I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna ask a couple questions. The first question being, uh, is there anybody with us right now? Okay. It's broken. We met our friend David, and he told us about a ghost tour in Pioneer Square. Hey everybody, it's our friend, David Mead. Hi David, why are we here today? Hi, well, a while back, um, I went on one of the tours here in Seattle. It was a great tour showing all kinds of interesting places around Seattle that could or could not be haunted. Um, so I actually went, because um, I was asked out on a date, and uh, she brought me down here, and uh, that's, that's our date. And how did the date end? Spectacularly. Where is she now? I don't know. <laughs> so went out well. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's go inside. Well, I'm Ross Allison. 
president and founder of a ghost, which stands for the Advanced Ghost Centers of Seattle Tacoma. I'm also the owner of Spooked in Seattle Ghost Tours. Um, I've been in the field of paranormal research for over 25 years. I started uh, Spooked in Seattle Ghost Tours uh, due to the fact that I was doing ghost tours on all my trips. And I'd find out that they made up a lot of stories and dramatized a lot of stories on these tours. So when I decided to do my ghost tours, I decided to keep the stories real. The first sound you hear is that of Ross, the second is that of the entity and show evidence that we had actually collected on our own personal investigations. That fan is too loud. Did you hear something there? And it's become so popular that we were actually voted as one of the top four tours in Seattle. I heard something. Well, when I started my ghost hunting group back in 2000, we were one out of a hundred nationally. And now due to the popularity of ghost hunting, it's easily that each state can have over a hundred groups or more. But unfortunately, the problem that we have today is there's a lot of what we call paradrama where a lot of these groups don't know what they're doing, they're territorial, and they will do anything they can to get their 15 minutes of fame. Before I got involved in ghost hunting, there was a few names out there that, of course, I followed. Uh, you had you know, Lorraine and Ed Warren, Hans Holzer, uh, Lloyd Arbach. You know, those were kind of the names that I grew up um, reading their material and watching th their career. So for me, um, I've always respected our roots, where ghost hunting came from. For me, I like where it's going as to becoming more scientific, a lot more equipment's coming out there, but I will never forget our roots, and I always have respect for those who have been doing this a lot longer than I have. So Ross brought up a name that we kept hearing, and it was Professor Lloyd Arbach. I was lucky enough to be introduced to a man named Rennie who actually had worked with this professor before. So at that point we knew that if we were ever going to attain Jedi level, we needed Yoda. Super nervous. So we're calling Lloyd Arbaugh from the Rhine Institute, the Windbridge Institute. He's a director for the Office of Paranormal Investigations. It's kind of a big deal. What do I call him? Professor Arbaugh? You're basically talking to the Brett Favre right. of paranormal investigations. So yeah, he's excited. We are going to San Francisco to meet with His Majesty, the President of Ghosts. I had to stay in Boise while everyone else went to San Francisco because I had to adult. We've decided to scrap Ghost Documentary and we're just going with the remake of Magnum P.I. What's Magnum P.I.? <laughs> You're dead to us. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. Why are you gonna throw up? I, I don't know. It was probably those baby octopus, octopi. Is octopus, octopus octopussy? Octopus what? Feratu? Fish Feratu? Klaatu Feratu. What? We finally got to go and meet Professor Lloyd Auerbach. We drove to Lafayette, California and went to his office at the HCH Institute where he was gracious enough to give us pretty much an entire afternoon of uh, his expertise and brilliance. Okay, uh, I'm Lloyd Auerbach. I'm a professor at John F. Kennedy University 
Atlantic University and an instructor at HCH Institute, which is where we are right now. Uh, I'm a parapsychologist, have a master's degree in parapsychology going way, way back, and have been around the field for over 35 years, uh, actually a lot longer than that. I've been an investigator, mostly an educator, but I've also invo been involved somewhat in research in a number of different places. I'm on the board of directors of the Ryan Research Center. I'm the president of the Forever Family Foundation. I'm an advisor to the Winbridge Institute and the Forever Family Foundation. And I'm also a professional magician and mentalist. So I've uh, kind of got the other side of things covered as well. Written a whole bunch of books. What else would you like me to talk about? That's it. I can keep going if you want. I <laughs> know, that's good. He just told us the coolest stuff. I think what led me into parapsychology was mystery. So I watched shows like The Twilight Zone and One Step Beyond and Topper, which was probably a hugely influential on me. You know, the fact is that neuroscience is going in one direction to understand consciousness. Other folks are going in a different direction in the sciences to understand consciousness. Physics goes a different direction. There is no agreed upon definition. You can't rule it out until you rule out that consciousness has a presence outside the body you have those correlations. You rarely ever get high magnetic fields with ghosts around, unless you're like getting the ghost to walk right in front of you. Uh, and it's the same with EVP, is the, f the phrasing that comes through has to be very clear, otherwise it really shouldn't count. The sheep goat effect is actually one of the most repeatable effects in parapsychology um, outside of ESP experiences. You wouldn't watch a do-it-yourself show and then go out and hang out a shingle as a plumber because plumbers have to be license, they go through journeyman training, they do a lot of stuff, and I think that certain ghost hunters who used to be plumbers would be very upset if anybody did that. He was amazing. One of the locations that he brought up in the interview was the Moss Beach Distillery down on the coast. Um, I have certainly a favorite location, is the, I have two favorite locations. One is the Moss Beach Distillery, uh, which is a restaurant I've been working with since 1991. One of the reasons it's my favorite, well, the food's great, the view's great. <laughs> Um, I love going down there to the coast, but more importantly, I've had, uh, the, from the first time I was there, the ghost was cooperative. Angela, where are we? We are at the Moss Beach Distillery. You gotta talk to the Where'd camera. Where'd you go? <laughs> Apparently it's a pretty hot spot. Car. Ghost. Game off. Game on. Thank you. Is that my mustache? No, you're good. Okay. They let us come in, they let us film, they let us do interviews. Um, they were wonderful. At one point we were at dinner and my hand got so freezing cold. Now, where I'm sitting at the table, the sun is just glaring in on me and Sean couldn't feel it. And then all of a sudden he did feel it and it moved around behind him to his back and had left me. So we went downstairs. We were able to get an interview and film, and we tried to do an EVP session, but it's a restaurant, obviously, with music and things, and that really wasn't going so well. Um, but we were able to talk to some people and get their experiences with the Blue Lady. We were filming the hostess. As she told stories of electrical happenings in that area and how things light up. And both of the boys' cameras just drained. My battery. And this battery was full when we got here. I've barely been filming. When we were setting up, put a brand new full battery in. And in the short time we were inside. Completely drained batteries. We go upstairs right by the entrance, dead. But I also do love the USS Hornet. That's another, the aircraft carrier. I do love going there as well because there's a lot of ghosts there. So now under the guidance of His Majesty, Professor Lloyd Auerbach. We learned some things. We were gonna use this newly received knowledge to go out and conduct a proper investigation. We learned that the last thing we should be doing is investigating like every other ghost show on television. from an entertainment perspective, if you like that, if you find them entertaining, 
That's what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be entertaining. If you find them entertaining, great. If you are watching them to learn your craft, um, get a life. Don't film with the lights off because no one in science does an investigation in the dark. Uh, that came straight out of TV. It was because of Sony Nightshot cameras. If there were not no Nightshot cameras, ghost hunters would not be working in the dark, guaranteed. It's important to work with a psychic. I'd rather work with a really good medium or psychic and have a direct conversation than maybe get out of five hours of, radio, of audio, you know, two things that don't do anything for me. With any type of paranormal investigation, I, I totally agree that you should have, if not one psychic medium, sensitive or clairvoyant, you should have multiple. Our current technology has not advanced to such a degree that we can pick up all of the different types of energies from these beings, from these ghosts. A psychic is somebody who can be in tune, can hear, can feel, can sense. They, they come from a sixth sense, uh, and often even a seventh sense. Clairvoyance, uh, simply put, is clear vision. Clairvoyance have an ability to see internally within the mind's eye, the third eye it's often called. Uh, sensitives can, s s oh my, they can sense the most subtle shifts and change in their bodies uh, with their environment. And, and when you have the interaction of spirits and ghosts around a sensitive, it is amazing what they can experience. But from my personal perspective, I believe almost every human uh, is uh, psychic or has a sixth sense. And often we are blind to it. Angela, what's today? It's my birthday. And where are we? We're in uh, the Tenderloin. Did you witness anything good last night? I uh, saw a couple of prostitutes, saw some drug deals go down. Nobody comes up here uh, there was a lady who was removed from the building across the street um, by an ambulance. She was in a wheelchair and she was wearing a wedding dress maid's costume. Then we're going to go investigate the San Leandro train depot. Yay! And are we going to have a special guest with us today? We are going to have a special guest. His name is Carl Fisher. Uh, my name is Carl Fisher. I work on the USS Hornet in Alameda, California, doing paranormal tours. He's one of Lloyd Auerbach's students. He's a sensitive. He's going to join us out there for this spidey sense. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. And all too. on your birthday. So we get to the train depot. We get to look around and kind of scope things out ourselves before Carl shows up. Uh, Carl gets there and we start asking him basically how he does what he does or the things that he feels and prepares for before going into an investigation. I definitely feel anxiety. Uh, I felt anxiety since I left the house and then I felt pretty good when I was standing out front talking to you guys but uh, as you know as we talked about coming in and stuff I definitely have the in my chest and that's a that's a huge sign for me. That particular depot in San Leandro, California, when you go into that area, I think first and foremost, uh, most people I, I think will be uh, aware of the energy of, of the historical vibes that are coming from that location first and foremost. Uh, there are also, if you get quiet enough in that area, you can hear people talking as if they're still living in a different time. And so it makes one wonder about certain theories of time continuing and that you know the early 1920s is still existing at this very moment as we experience the year 2015. I would feel that there's there's definitely a residual imprint here for sure. So we grab our cameras and now that we are armed with our trusty sensitive. Carl kind of walked around and showed us how things work, how an item will give him a, a feeling or or something that somebody has worked off of, uh, you know, a personally handwritten note. These are all things that give him feeling. Uh, we head through the building, go to the back, and start doing some EVP work. The first thing that happened changed our minds to the point of changing our minds on a lot of things. The footsteps. The footsteps, loud footsteps that everybody on the crew, Angela, Bill, myself, and Carl, heard. The camera 
was focused on Carl as he was talking. Well, you know? they're, they're, you know, they're feeding off of your energy. As we were filming, we heard somebody walking up. Having high, spontaneous peaks of energy that's they, like, they can feed that's them. helping them combust and mm -hmm. like be able to like break through, you know? That's really interesting. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm the first one to react to the footsteps. I look down the hallway to see if anybody's coming. I ask if anyone hears that. And mm -hmm. like be able to like break through, you know? And mm -hmm. like be able to like break through, you know? That's really interesting. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, All right, so what do you want us to do? This is, I'm excited. Listen, I'm super excited about this flashlight thing because we've never done this. We did, was that? It was so distinct that I actually stopped my camera and turned to look to see who was there. And nobody ended up being in the hallway. I just went up front. I, you heard it? I heard footsteps. Too. I heard the footsteps right here in the hallway. Yeah. She's been sitting up in the front corner. Did you hear footsteps? Yeah, I did. They no. were right here. I, I thought she was I right thought here. they were right here. Yeah. But over Are you there. serious? Yeah. Cool. There was just somebody walking and I right just got there. Massive chills right Well, there. I got massive chills because I just the thought of something. I mean, now I have you them. heard it, right? I heard somebody yeah, walking right there. Yeah. We went outside onto the boardwalk to try and recreate those footsteps. What are you going to do right now? Okay, well we all just heard footsteps. Clear as day, walk right up to us uh, to the point where Angela actually stopped and said, was that Teresa? I went up front to see if that was Teresa. Teresa's still sitting up in the front corner of the, of the entrance room. So now um, I'm going to go outside and walk the entire length of the front patio and see if it sounds the same. All right, so there's your problem. This is exactly where we would have heard the footsteps. Mm -hmm. And there is your motion sensor light. So if there was somebody walking out here... The light would have gone on. I don't know. When we first got here, I didn't feel anything. And now I'm just buzzing. <sighs> yeah, it definitely sounded more That's like distinct more like, like yeah. that, for That's sure. Weird. I heard it too. I heard I mean, it. I, I thought somebody was right here. Over. So did I. So what are you feeling right now? You still feeling... Do you want me to talk about when I heard you talk when you weren't talking? Yeah, it, um... What? What? What'd you say? Yeah, just... Bill comes up behind me, and I swear to God on my children's life, I hear him talk and say something behind me as if he's trying to whisper and get my attention. You see that? Um, I didn't say a word. You really did just hear something? Yeah, you confusion. Just, said just a lot of confusion. To where I'm like, what? please, <laughs> you know. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you still recording, Sean? I'm holding a recorder. She's holding a recorder. The camera obviously has a recorder. Yeah. What did you say? I'm standing here listening to you. She just turned around to me and she's what? What did you say? She said, swears I just said something. You did. Of all three of those recording devices, Bill's was the only one that didn't catch the voice that I heard. Uh, it may be that a couple of people have started seeing or having an experience in the house and the disbelievers will actually block their experience psychologically. When we talk about hallucinations, we always think about seeing things that are not there. That's what people think about for hallucinations. But the late Harry Blackstone Jr. pointed out there's a negative hallucination. And that is not seeing things that are in fact there. And he wasn't necessarily even talking about paranormal stuff. You put something down on the table for a moment and it's gone and your perception, somebody else can see it but you can't. We are not seeing with our eyes, we are seeing with our brains. That's perception. So just because your eyes sees it doesn't mean your brain's gonna see it. And you could have the most powerful ghost in the universe appear in front of people, even create an image that's reflecting light, which is not what's happening. They're connecting kind of mind to mind. But even if they did that, the, the disbeliever could block that image completely and not see it because they don't wanna believe it's there. So yeah. apparently something got... You want to turn the camera to her, Sean? Oh, that's scary, though. He's Sean, what just happened? Is there anything... Is there any... Honey, is there anything... He's got some red marks on his neck. Though. Well, well he was just, he's I was just also a ginger. Something no. just tickled my neck. Uh-uh. Yeah. You don't have anything? I don't know. So, if there's somebody here with us right now... I, I've... Since I walked in this room, I feel a strong male presence and obviously he feels something too so if there's somebody here can you try and make yourself apparent to us you can light this k2 meter up 
All you have to do is get near it. We're not here trying to invade your space or bother you or anything like that. We just want to talk to you and we want to know why you're here. Feel any different right now? Do you want to try going upstairs and see? Yeah, we can go upstairs. Let's go up there. So, these people are here filming a documentary. So, if you have a story or any unfinished business, now's your time to talk to us. Was that you that I heard whisper? I thought it was Bill talking behind me. I thought you whispered. Yeah. Thank you. So, do you work here? Or did you work here? So, are you angry? I've heard people say that they've got EVPs of, of swearing. Is that you cursing and swearing? Was it, so, if it wasn't you, is somebody else here that's swearing? Is there more than one person here with us right now? Do you hear that knock too with mm -hmm. that? Yeah. is an intelligent microprocessor based instrument specifically designed for paranormal investigations. It was built by paranormal investigators for paranormal investigators. It has a built-in EMF detector, thermometer and flashlight. Basically, it's the iPhone of paranormal and ghost hunting technologies. It's designed for quick captures of key readings with the ability to quickly record and clearly display the correlation of EMF and temperature change in the surrounding area. It's the only device capable of doing this. However, there is no scientific evidence that the male meter detects any paranormal activity. Are we done now? You want to try talking with the flashlight? We were getting numerous hits off the EMF. When we began the flashlight experiment, that was one of the most interesting things that we saw. People are really skeptical about this. I do this on the ship a lot. It seems to be a very easy way of them being able to communicate. And as with everything, you know, it's just, nobody really knows what's going on. It could be us making psychic impressions and willing mm -hmm. things to happen. So if you're here talking with us and you're the person making the K2 light up, can you try to turn that flashlight off if that's easier? Okay. I think that he's really funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I think he's really funny. I think he's like, uh, <laughs> turn the flashlight off. Yeah, I can turn the flashlight off very easily. Thank you so much. And this went on for five, 10 minutes. We ask a question. A light will turn on. We ask it to turn on or off, it would turn off. The EMF would go. It was actually pretty entertaining. If you want to try and communicate to us and talk to us, if we can't hear you with our ears, we can still hear you possibly on these recorders when we listen to them later. But then as we moved away from that and we started talking about other things, the light still seemed to flash periodically and the EMF stuff kept going. around and, and wanting and willing these things to happen right now, you know, but random surges, it, 
it doesn't seem like it's consistent with with in situations like this where we're asking questions and we're getting responses you know if this place is important to you can you turn the flashlight back off thank you that's what i'm talking about like because we if it was if it was random like, wouldn't it be happening while we're just sat here having Doing conversations, it. too, you know? <laughs> hey. <laughs> I told you, I think it's really funny. Was it just by chance? Was it somebody still trying to get our attention? But the number of times that it happened led me to believe that something was actually going on. Moving right across down here as I walked in, it hit the stairway and came up. Not an orb, not nothing, just a big ball of light. Flash or like consistent streak. I don't get the impression of an angry person. I get the impression of a an old working class male. You know. That's awesome. Think he'll come back sometime? Yeah, definitely. I think the more and more people, I don't get the impression that he doesn't want to communicate. You know, I think that uh, sometimes you go places and you can kind of tell that you know they they they're angry and they, it's annoying to them. But the impression I get off of that and the general feelings I get is the guy seems like he would be a friendly individual and open to people coming here and trying to communicate with him. The one thing that made me believe that we were actually having a paranormal experience uh, didn't happen until after the investigation. Angela and I realized we were so exhausted, so extremely exhausted, it was almost to the point of sickness. So anyway, uh, talk to me for a second. Um, that was crazy. Um, every bit of energy is drained out of my body. I feel like I could fall down right now. And yeah, I, I can't even think right now. I'm, I'm completely drained. Completely drained, like a battery. Can you unlock the car, please, so I can... What do you think? Um, yeah, I just feel super drained. Like I just said. The lights? The ghost just made the lights go on in the car behind you. <laughs> I think it was really interesting in the very beginning when we were asking if you're the one who made, who made the footsteps turn the light on, light went on. Are you the one who touched Sean, light went on. Are you the one who I heard whisper behind me when I thought it was Bill and I was kind of going on with that question and it waited until I was done with that question and then it turned on. So that was pretty great. I was just getting really tingly and then just sucked the life out of me. So. I still have a lot of energy. Which led us to believe that Bill is in fact a ghost. I really do think the footprint thing was something, the footsteps thing was something. The flashlight thing and, and uh, uh, what was it called? The K2 meter? Yeah, the millimeter. That thing was just going off, just randomly go off. So anyway, it could have just been the ghost trying to talk to us. I did feel very staticky um, when I asked to take my energy, I felt like uh, not hair was actually raising, but you know when you walk in a room and you feel just static. I felt that, but uh, the mind's a pretty powerful thing. So anyway, this mic is making an amazing shadow on you right now. It is. Where? Hmm? That's it. That's all I have. I just am not sure that we saw anything, but it was really cool. So anyway, that's it. So it's been a few months. I have been editing like a mofo, trying to get this movie done. Re-examining footage, seeing things that I can't explain. As you've probably already seen as we put them in this movie. That, you know, we, we got some interesting stuff. At the beginning, I was nothing but excited and amped and hyped and thrilled to be a part of it. That has not changed. 
from when we started until now. Honestly, I do believe a little bit more in ghosts. Uh, I think I'm more skeptical of evidence from ghost sightings from our investigations. But I believe less in ghost hunting techniques and ghost hunting equipment that I've seen on ghost shows and ghost documentaries. Still hurt. Why? Why does this still hurt? Did we get a ghost? I don't know. Oh look, it's me eating again. The best piece of advice I can give to somebody going to hunt ghosts is just to follow your instincts because really that's the best thing we have. I believe in ghosts more since we started this project, which is almost impossible because the amount I believed in uh, ghosts when we started this project was, uh, I completely believe. Too much yogurt. Now it's not just a belief. Now, I know. Uh, I believe in ghosts the same. I wouldn't say that I believe in ghosts more, and I wouldn't say I believe in ghosts less. The one thing I do believe is people's desire to see ghosts is more than I thought. And if you want to see a ghost, you're going to see a ghost. And if you want to have your explanation be paranormal, then that's what it's going to be. I also, at the same time, believe that if you're so close-minded as somebody like me, you might miss that ghost which is right in front of your face. I really think that it comes down to trusting your senses and your own personal experiences over all the technology. So a few places that I would love to investigate, Waverly Sanitarium, it, that, it, that's scary. I'd like to work our way across the country, end up on the East Coast and culminate the holy grail of all haunted places, Europe. I think our next film should be Aliens. That's an easy one. I'm coming after Bigfoot. You know, I, I don't think it's the role of science in general to make people believe in anything, for that matter. It is the role of science to provide the evidence and let people decide for themselves to a point. You know, the idea is to come up with a preponderance of evidence um, to show that there really is an effect here and to come up with, try, to try to find some kind of explanation for it. I don't think that there's anything, if it's a true skeptic, a doubter, not a disbeliever, because a lot of people call themselves skeptics when in fact they're total true disbelievers. We're never going to convince a true disbeliever, never. Um, the true disbelievers are only going to find out if there's life after death when they die. Okay. Now you see me. Now you don't. Now you see me, and now you don't And if you don't believe me, think I'm a ghost of your imagination Then keep hide and seeking, and I'll just play along I'll just play along I'm not only in your dreams, but that's the way it seems, that's the way it seems. I haunt you in your sleep, so you can think you're crazy. And see and see. See me.
this place.